Telecommuting is on the rise these days, with more companies turning to video conferencing to keep their employees in the loop. But nothing is more embarrassing than leading a meeting and having some glitches pop up. One of the most popular video conferencing platforms in use today is Zoom. However, even the most tech savvy people run into problems from time to time. Hang on till the end of this video because I'm going to review the four most common issues Zoom users face and give you step-by-step -step ways to fix them. If you want to learn how to use Zoom, I've actually done a companion tutorial video explaining all of the features and functions of Zoom on both computers and smartphones. I'll link to that video in the description below so you can watch it after watching this video and you can learn things about the program you may never have known. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. But you can call me a dadographer. If you like what you see in this video, stick around to the end because I've got a couple of photography, videography, film ranking, and editing freebies I'm going to offer you, and even training courses I'll tell you about that will definitely help to improve your work and help grow your business through earned media exposure. And remember, I welcome all your comments and questions and more on all of my videos. With that, let's get right to it. Number one is webcam video or audio not working. Nothing is more frustrating than having your webcam or audio not work on a Zoom call. If your web camera is not showing up or is selected and is not working on Zoom, then you might want to try some of these basic tips first. When you join a call, Zoom will prompt you with an option to join the video before entering the meeting. Always click this button or else you will enter the call without your camera feed, just audio. If your web camera isn't showing up, check to make sure that all other programs that use your webcam are closed. Zoom won't be able to use the camera if you've already given access to it in a different application and that application is running. You can only do one thing at a time, in other words. So this is what it looks like. I'm doing a YouTube live stream as I test here, and you can see the audio here, the video. When you open Zoom, it's not reading both cameras. Uh, you'll just get my icon here. Let's end the stream. That's what it looks like when the camera is taken by one thing, but not the other. If your webcam or audio still isn't working, you can test your audio and video in Zoom in the settings. Once open, you can join the call as usual on the Zoom app and follow the instructions on the screen to get your meeting going. Check, 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 check. Microphone check. Test, test, test. Check, 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 check. Microphone check. Test, test, test. Check, check, check. And the microphone is working along with the video. Click start video and there we go. Let's do a test. FaceTime camera is built in. Okay, there we go. Video settings. We can do the test here. This is where you would test. If you're having a problem with the video on Zoom, come down to the video here and make sure that this isn't stopped. You'll notice it's crossed out. It shows your icon. I have it set up as my logo. So click start video here. Make sure it was turned on to make sure it works. And if you're still having problems, 
let's go to the settings video settings here and check to make sure that you have the right one set now i only have the built-in camera on this but make sure you have it set if you have a different one you may have chosen the separate one or again just like you saw with the youtube live stream something else might have been running and if you're having audio problems and you can't hear make sure that the audio is turned on and let's do a test just to make sure turn that up so you can hear yes i hear the ringtone and check 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 this is my mic working it's reading it you can see that here and it's going to play back and check 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 this is my mic working it's reading it you can see that here and it's going to play back now you know that it's working so let's, let's click yes so we know and you might want to click join with computer audio or same as system same as system means whatever you have set up if you click with join with computer audio it will read the microphone that you have built in to your computer if for example you had something else like you have an external mic like i'm wearing here you would want the computer to perhaps pick that up if it's plugged into your computer so what you want to do is change this to whatever microphone input you're using it could be the line input that has the microphone in or i have it set to same as system meaning that it's always going to read the microphone that's internal if you want to test it, you can go to the audio settings here and you can check your levels here and test your mic. So, for example, let's click uh, test mic here. Check one, two, check one, two. You can see it moving, then you know it works. Mic here. Check one, two, check one, two. You can see it moving, then you know it works. And we heard the playback. If you want to change your volume for whatever reason, uh, if this box is checked, it's an automatic volume adjustment, but you can do it manually. Uncheck that, this bar becomes blue and you can check the internal volume raise it or lower it i like to keep it automatic because it's a good level automatic and it will hear if for example you want to test your speakers just to make sure so you can hear back what other people are saying you can do a speaker test here in the settings we heard that so we know it's working this is your volume control for the speakers notice it's very low and now it's much louder, I have it maxed out. We'll click stop. And here's your test for built-in output. I have it as my built-in output, which is the internal speakers. Down here, if it's accidentally turned off, it will only show your avatar, which in this case I have set up not as a picture, but as my company logo. But you click the button again to start video and it'll work. Let me end that real quick and show you what happens if you accidentally turn that video on button off. When you start a meeting, it will only show your avatar and you'll be able to hear, but that's it. So you click the start video and it will turn on. It uses the rear facing camera. Be certain that you have the correct camera working. And if you don't, this button here is the front facing camera. So if we click that, it goes to your front facing, that's my computer. So let me turn it around and make sure it's working. If you're having problems being heard, make sure the mute button isn't tapped. That's down here in the bottom. When you tap that, a line comes through that means you are muted and no one's going to be able to hear you. So tap that to make sure that it says mute and the line is gone so that you will be heard. If you're having other audio problems, click this button here and it'll give you just an idea of where the sound's coming from for your system. So make sure that you have it set to system capture so it comes from whatever you have plugged in. If you're still having audio or video problems, come here to more and make sure that you don't have something incorrectly checked here. So if you go to meeting settings, you can scroll down and make sure, for example, that you don't have the mute on entry button turned on. That usually keeps the sound turned off when you first go in, but just make sure that you didn't accidentally click that. Same thing with the play, join, and leave sound. Make sure those are off so that you aren't accidentally quiet. And make sure that you didn't, for example, 
have this button click the unmute themselves because people might have accidentally unmuted themselves if you have that off and then you can hear them if you don't want to. Sometimes though the problem might not be zoom at all. If you're on a Windows 10 or Mac OS device the webcam might be blocked. You can correct this by checking your app permissions to make sure the Zoom app on your web browser can use your actual webcam. On the web specifically, you can also check this setting by restarting your call and making sure you pressed allow when prompted about the camera and microphone access. On a Windows computer, you can check to see if your webcam is blocked by searching for webcam in the start menu and selecting choose which apps can use the camera from the menu. Scroll down and you'll see a list of applications that are allowed to use your webcam. Make sure the box for your web browser or Zoom is checked. In the same way, you can also search for the microphone and choose the microphone privacy settings to do the same to make sure that the audio works. On a Mac OS device, you'll need to click security and privacy in the system settings, click the lock icon, and enter your password to make changes. You can then click camera from the sidebar. You'll also want to make sure the box for the microphone is checked too. Under system preferences and see here sound click on that you could have it set up on your internal microphone or line in if I plug my mic into my computer directly I would choose this one it would no longer work right here you see that working you see how it's turned off that's because it's set to the internal mic input and output if I change it to line in it's going to expect me to have my mic plugged into the mic input I'll keep it to internal so that the built-in speakers will always work this of course is your volume this is your output volume as well and you can mute it here so be careful that you don't have your sound muted if you keep it always set to the built-in speakers built-in microphone will do it there the internal mic like in my laptop in this case will always work and people will hear you and the built-in speakers will allow you to hear them. If you do have an external mic plugged into your computer, then you would choose the built-in line input. And if you're just not sure what to do, set it to same as system. So whatever your system is, it will go to those external speakers or external mic inputs that you have. The safest bet is to always keep built-in microphone for your speakers and built-in internal speakers so that the built-in mic will always hear you and you will always hear through the built-in speakers what is being said by the other participants. And that is how you troubleshoot the audio and the video if you're not getting sound or video on Zoom. If things still aren't working right, you might also want to try and uninstall Zoom and reinstall it from the Zoom Center on their website, which is zoom.us. Number two is echoes during your call. Another common problem with Zoom is audio echo during a meeting. If you hear audio echo or feedback during your meeting, there are three possible reasons why. First is someone could have both computer and telephone audio active at the same time. In this case, you'll want to ask them to manually leave one in favor of the other. They'll have to either hang up on the telephone call or leave audio during the conference by clicking the up arrow next to the microphone icon on the computer and choosing leave computer audio. And that way they'll just see video. In this case, it will only have one audio source and that should help alleviate the problem. Another cause could be that people with computer or telephone speakers might be too close to each other, in which case they have to separate. Lastly, multiple computers with active audio could be in the same conference room. To resolve either of these situations, you'll have to ask the two people that are too close to one another or to the speakers to move apart, or ask one of them to leave the audio conference or mute the audio on their device and it should eliminate the problem. Another way to help with the audio is in the advanced settings. You can have echo cancellation either on auto, which is the standard setting, or aggressive, which will really help. The best solution is actually to turn the sound off on one of the devices, either phone that's too close or computer. And you would do that here by clicking off mute or in the settings, you could say leave computer audio. If you're having some echo problems, come over here to more and click 
disable original sound. What that's going to do is the original sound allows you to preserve the sound from your microphone without using Zoom's echo cancellation or audio enhancing features. So you might want to disable that if you're having echo problems or other issues. Number three is problem sharing your screen. Sharing your screen is an important part of a Zoom call and is as easy as clicking share screen at the bottom of the window. If you're planning to share your screen during a call, you might need to check a couple of settings first. Make sure that you have a solid internet connection and that you're connected to the call. Sharing your screen takes up a lot of bandwidth. It's also a good idea to try a screen share meeting first in Zoom as a test. You can do this by selecting start with no video at the home tab when starting or joining a meeting. Your meeting will then start with only audio conferencing, freeing up some of the bandwidth. Your video will not automatically be turned on in this case. And if you do want to come back to video, you have to turn that on manually. Alternatively, if you're already on a call and need to share your screen, try turning off your video by clicking the stop video button and then choosing the green share screen button and see if that clears up the problem. If you have problems sharing your screen, you want to click this, make sure that this is on and you have selected the proper one. Make sure you have desktop selected because uh, you may have chosen either iPhone connection here or your whiteboard. You'll also want to make sure you click share computer sound and or decide if you want to optimize the screen share for the video clip. In other words, whatever you're sharing will take up the full screen. And also make sure that you have chosen in the advanced settings whether you want have only a portion of the screen selected and you've mistakenly selected the wrong portion that you want, make sure you haven't turned off your sound here. Content from second camera, make sure that isn't checked too because it's going to think it's a, an alternate camera. If you're still having problems, try stopping your video but clicking the share screen so you share whatever you need and that will give you more bandwidth. And it'll still share. You can see how it's highlighted around the edge. It's sharing my screen. It tells you here too that you're sharing the screen, but without video. Now I'm on my smartphone. If you notice down here at the bottom, the green button in the middle, share content, allows me to share my screen from my phone if I need to. So if I click that, it gives you these options of what you want to actually share. It could be something from your Google Drive or Dropbox or your iCloud. It could be photos, which means it would share photos you have saved in your phone. Or if you click at the top here, the screen button, I can usually record my screen too if I do that. And I can turn the microphone on or off if I choose to do so from here. But if you're on your phone and you're having trouble sharing, Make sure that you click the share screen content and you're sharing from the right spot. Whether it's your screen or your photos, you don't accidentally hit something else. Let me cancel out of that. Another thing to consider when you're sharing screen is if we come over here to more again, click minimize meeting. And what's happening here is this is the screen minimized when you minimize it. So I can share my screen, but people can still see a little picture of me to tap out of that. You just click your picture and it comes right back to you. Number four are problems receiving email messages from Zoom. Another common problem is not being able to receive email messages from Zoom. This can include notifications and activation emails. These usually take 30 minutes to arrive, but could actually take longer. And if you're in a hurry, this is a problem. However, if the email doesn't arrive, you need to make sure that your email is configured properly. Usually this isn't something you do on your end, so you'll need to ask your IT department to whitelist Zoom's email IP addresses. If you're using Gmail or a personal email service of some sort, you can check your spam account because the emails will go there sometimes as well. The emails will come from the following address, no-reply at zoom.us. So you want to make sure that that is on your safe senders list so that those emails don't go to spam, but they actually come to your inbox so you have them. Alternatively, you want to make certain you have Zoom set up to copy and paste the meeting URL and other ID info to your clipboard so that you can email or text the info to, to participants and they'll actually get it much quicker. If you want to invite people, 
go to participants, go to invite, and you can invite via your contacts or email. Make sure you copy to the clipboard here or the invitation. Make sure you have that checked and you get the message that it has been copied to the clipboard. And if you have to send a mess message, let me jump over to my email and call it test zoom invite. And we'll paste the information here. And that is the zoom link. If I were to click on the link, copy it here, it would take me to the zoom meeting. And there it goes. Puts me right in the Zoom meeting. I went to invite and I did copy the invitation. I could email it or text it. Open up a blank piece of paper here. And there's the Zoom information. I can save it and send that out. It gives you the Zoom link and the ID and the password to, for this particular meeting. But if people have problems actually getting the meetings because it takes a long time can take up to 30 minutes what you want to do is copy and paste that make sure that that's turned on on your smartphone or on your computer and you'll be able to quickly copy those and send out emails or texts for, on your own so people can join meetings quickly and won't have to wait for the delay that's how you do it on a computer let me show you how it is on a smartphone a few other troubleshooting issues with a smartphone. If you come over here to the settings in the bottom right hand corner, click that, then click meetings. Uh, you want to check if you're having problems here and scroll down to this auto copy invite link here. And if you're having trouble sending messages or emails from your phone to send people the information they need to join the meeting, make sure that this is checked on. Green again means on, white is off, and it'll copy and paste the meeting ID and the link to your clipboard so you can quickly send out a text or an email on your own so that you don't have that delay from Zoom. Now, if all this is making sense to you, put I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, what video conferencing software are you using now that the pandemic has been going on for many months, if any? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the info in this video useful, I'd love to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,400 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this far. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer, editor, and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot video with your DSLR, mirrorless, and video camera that will show you the settings to allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all of the information you need on important video techniques such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created editing training for Adobe Premiere Pro, of course. My quick start training is designed to get you up and editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors. And now I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without actually spending big butts on advertising. I've worked with Christina 
and use her advice and training successfully so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media. You can stand out from the competition with the course and what you learn because it's not something that everyone else has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand that everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you may know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you, on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own talents and experiences. You'll find the link to that group in the description below as well, so feel free to join that where you can learn even more.